One of the biggest defining features of Pokemon are their typings. With over 900 Pokemon in the game and a massive variety of type combinations available to us, I wanted to look at some of the best dual typings possible in the Pokemon franchise. Some of these typings might not exist yet, but they are needed. Some are in the game, but not with the right representation to truly shine. So today, I give you the best dual typings in Pokemon. When I talk about the best dual typing, I have to split this video into two parts. The first part, I will cover what I think is the best offensive typing, and then in part two, I'll discuss the best defensive typing. Oh, and it will all be in one video, by the way. But before we get into today's video, I'd like to talk about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a great turn-based RPG that I'm sure you're all aware of, but things have changed a lot since the last time we've talked about it here. Raid is now available to play on PC and has cross-device play, so if you want to finally give your phone a break and start putting your computer to work, you can do so without having to worry about starting over from square one. I actually downloaded it on PC not too long ago and gave it a test run. I'm here at the final stage of Durham Forest. I actually almost beat it, but the dragon unfortunately got to me first. So I had to buff up my champions for a little bit before I decided to take him on again. As you can see, I decided to stick with Alhane, but added a few more bow users to my team, being Witness and Sniper. I didn't have a fourth bow user, so I just decided to use Guardian, as I thought he looked pretty cool. Buffing them really helped though, as I only had one loss this time around. And, as you can see, I defeated the dragon. You can also challenge others in the raid community by partaking in the tournaments, by taking on the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, or entering the Dragon's Lair. You can get your hands on some really great rewards. With so much to do and new ways to play, I think now's the time to get started and download Raid today if you haven't already. Be sure to check out the link in the description below, and if you're new to Raid, you can get yourself 100k silver in addition to a cool free champion, Grumbler. These extra rewards can be found in your inbox here, but only for the next 30 days, so be sure to act fast. And with all that being said, let's hop into today's video. In my mind, when I think about the best offensive typing, my mind goes to Ice and Electric, personally. In competitive Pokemon, there is always talk about access to Bolt Beat, which is a big thing for coverage. But now, imagine that as a stab. We do have both Arctazolt and Rotom Frost with this typing, but Rotom Frost lacks in the fact that it doesn't have access to regular old Ice Beam, but can still pack a very strong punch, and in my opinion, is a very underrated Rotom form. As for Arctazolt, its stats are just a bit too low to really utilize the Ice electric combination. A good ice electric Pokemon should be a glass cannon. It should be capable of throwing out a strong move turn one and fall victim to the lightest sneeze in its general direction. It could have stab options like icicle crash, wild charge slash volt tackle, ice punch, thunderbolt, ice beam, etc. Whichever Pokemon hopefully receives this treatment in the future, it'll be a menace on the battlefield. With this type combination, stab options have an advantage against water, flying, dragon, ground, and grass types. I see a good ice electric type having a base 110 speed stat and at least 100 in either attack stat. Defenses would be low between 60 and 80. Overall, there wouldn't be many things to stand in the way of such a big threat. Another typing I've heard quite a lot about, which would be incredibly strong that we don't have yet, is Fire and Fairy. I personally think this typing could do a lot of damage. A Pokemon primarily focused on the special side, but with physical options such as Flare Blitz, Fire Punch, and Play Rough. With this typing in mind, it would have the advantage over Grass, Bug, Ice, Steel, Dragon, Dark, and Fighting types. A Fire and Fairy typing Pokemon to me would be incredibly awesome, and I really want to see it soon. I have no idea what's holding Game Freak back because this will be an ingenious Pokemon. They should honestly just make the new Glaring Moltres a Fire Slash Fairy type. That would be definitely something. I want to see the amazing special move pool this type of Pokemon would bring. Moves such as Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Mystical Fire, and much more. If we take inspiration from Moltres' base stats to create our ideal Fire Slash Fairy Pokemon, I imagine it would look something like this. Base 90 attack, base 135 special attack, base 90 HP, 95 speed, and 85 and above defense stats. Now please, Game Freak. Give it to us. A new typing and an incredible offensive Pokemon for everyone to play around with. And for my last thought when it comes to the best offensive typing, I think about Galar's own pseudo-legendary, Dragapult. They really just made Dragapult amazing. Fast and mixed offenses, strong stab move pull with hints of versatility in there. Being a ghost type usually gives a lot of coverage options, which is very nice. Dragapult shows a great example of what a ghost dragon should do with its stats, being a very fast Pokemon with a massive base 142 speed. Now, I would probably just have your regular dragon ghost type make its speed around base 
120 with the same 120 attack and 100 special attack, and its HP down to base 50. With the typing of Dragon Ghost, Dragapult does naturally well against most Pokemon, but has an advantage over Ghost, Psychic, and Dragon type Pokemon. Some of the great moves a Dragon Ghost Pokemon has access to for Stab are Phantom Force, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Shadow Ball, Draco Meteor, Shadow Sneak, etc. Having priority options and strong stab moves, plus stalling options that can't be protected. An exceptional speed stat, great offenses, but obviously a bit of a glass cannon. However, it is immune to two prominent priority moves, being Mach Punch and Extreme Speed. Dragon Ghost is on the downside, unfortunately weak to Sucker Punch and Shadow Sneak as well, which is not the greatest when being a glass cannon, but it still proves itself as a superb offensive cannon, and therefore in my opinion is one of the best offensive dual typings possible possible through the 18 types available in the game. For every good offense, there is a great defense behind it. Or so they say. And when it comes to defense, I think about Steel Flying. Both Pokemon with this typing have captured what it means to be a defensive tank. Looking at Corviknight with Roost, Bulk Up, Body Press, nothing on the physical side breaks this bird. It has very limited weaknesses, only being linked to Fire and Electric, one weakness being able to be removed by the use of Roost, and temporarily removing the flying typing. The typing is also immune to poison types, and by extension, being immune to Toxic, which is also incredibly handy. It has Defog for hazard removal, and that's not even covering any retaliation options. With the Fly still typing, you can also use moves such as Iron Head, Brave Bird, Hurricane, etc. But just looking at Corviknight doesn't really color the whole picture. We have another great example in Skarmory, easily one of the most annoying defensive flying types before Gen 8 rolled out Corviknight to everyone, with a chunky physical defense and the ability Sturdy for an ability. It has access to Spikes, Stealth Rocks, Toxic, Defog, Roost. The amount of utility Skarmory has provided proves it's worthy as an incredible defensive tank, much because of that ever so great still in flying typing. When it comes to defense, I always hear people talk about defensive water types, and for good reason. With only two weaknesses, they do take quite a lot of punishment before falling over. But what if we replaced two common weaknesses like electric and grass for something a bit less common in dragon and fairy? The water dragon dual typing proves itself an absolute threat both in offensive and defense. Nothing like staring down a Dracovish, Kindred, or Palkia on the other side of the field. Now they might not have the most resistances in terms of defense, but there are far too few and in between that can strike these behemoths down. Now, I am aware that freeze dry is a move, but it was also specifically made for this type combination. And I don't know about you, but when the game creators make a move to specifically say, you're too strong, and water dragon Pokemon just laugh. Freeze dry then adding four times weakness is such a sturdy type combination. Now, unlike the steel type, water dragon still suffers from the option of being inflicted with poison and toxic, which is unfortunate. But I didn't want every dual typing option to feature steel. Make it a bit more diverse while sticking to the theme of defense. Dragon water types have access to stab moves like Skull for Burning, Hydro Pump for Power, Dragon Pulse for Dragon Stab, and Dragon Tail for Phasing, and many other great options for both offense and defense. I know I mentioned before that I didn't just want Steel types, so Dragon Water made its appearance, but Steel returns. This time paired up with Ghost. The Ghost Edition allows the Steel type Pokemon to be immune to Fighting types and the newly improved Rapid Spin in Generation 8. Now for comparison, we already have Aegislash's shield form to look at when looking at a defensive version of this typing. Now the one thing I would like to improve on Aegislash as a pure defensive Pokemon would be the access to some form of hazard setup. Stealth Rocks are most preferable, but Spikes would be welcome too. Beyond that, we have still Ghost with only four weaknesses, those being Fire, Ground, Ghost itself, and Dark type moves. Ghost Steel also has a wide array of moves to pick from in terms of both offense and defense. There's Destiny Bond to take their attacker down with them, Shadow Sneak, Iron Head, Iron Defense, Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball, Flash Cannon, and Gyro Ball. It has access to priority, defensive setup, refusing to go out on its own, high critical hit chances, and speed reliant damage. The variety of secondary effects are incredible, and those are just stab options. Most ghost types are known to have a good amount of coverage depending on what origin the Pokemon has, so who knows what sort of sly options a different ghost steel type could possibly sneak your way.
Now I know that some of these types can be argued for or against, but that's why I chose to make this a discussion video. I hope that you all enjoy my choices, and if you disagree, I would love to hear what you think is the best offensive typing, the best defensive typing, and if you can, tell me what you think is the best overall dual typing in general in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in Game Club Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weez Austin, Sodden Grider, Nigma 97 and Kermit117 did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.